In the rapidly evolving landscape of modern warfare, the chasm between offensive and defensive technologies has never been so starkly evident as it is in the case of Pakistan's air defense dilemma. The rise of mass-produced, precision-guided missiles and swarm drones has transformed the nature of conflict, shifting advantage overwhelmingly toward the attacker. For Pakistan, this transformation poses an existential threat to its ability to protect critical assets, urban infrastructure, and military capabilities in a sustained large-scale conflict, particularly when faced with the full breadth of India's modern arsenal. The story of this vulnerability is not just about numbers or hardware, but a wider drama encompassing economics, operational reality, technological innovation, and the brutal arithmetic of modern missile and drone warfare. To understand the scale of the problem, one must first examine the backbone of Pakistan's current air defense. A network of Chinese-origin HQ-9B long-range surface-to-air missiles, HQ-16, LY-80, medium-range systems, a scattering of short-range legacy weapons, limited gun systems, electronic warfare capabilities, and FN-6 man-portable missiles. While these systems are world-class in some respects, their reach is shallow due to meager deployment. Only a handful of HQ-9B batteries, somewhat more HQ-16 systems, and limited gun and U support, all covering a vast nation with dozens of strategic and economic targets. There is no record, as of August 2025, of any operational German IRST batteries. Though such acquisitions have been explored, financial and diplomatic realities have left them unattained. The long-hailed HQ-19, a system roughly comparable to the US THAAD and capable of intercepting ballistic missiles and low-orbit satellites, was only formally offered by China in 2025 and has yet to be delivered or fielded in any operational sense. Pakistan, as of today, exists largely under a Chinese missile defense umbrella that is thin, costly, easily targeted, and irreplaceable at the scale a modern conflict demands. Overlaying this vulnerable shield is the threat matrix posed by modern India's rapidly expanding offensive capabilities. India is now capable, through proven industrial and technological means, of launching multi-domain mass saturation attacks that combine swarms of drones, loitering munitions, and hundreds of cruise and supersonic missiles in a single day's offensive. A plausible and devastating scenario envisions 500 Nurbhay cruise missiles, stealthy, subsonic, terrain-hugging, and difficult to interdict. 50 BrahMos supersonic missiles, fast, maneuverable, and with a minimal response window. 1,000 large loitering munitions, Harop, Harpy, Banshee, and others, purpose-built to seek and destroy the very air defense systems that would oppose them. And another 1,000 small, but potent FPV drones and kamikaze mini-munitions aimed at radars, infrastructure, or soft targets. This cumulative daily barrage would be an order of magnitude greater than anything previously faced in South Asia. The brute arithmetic of interception is shocking. Real-world wartime experience from Ukraine and Israel, as well as the lessons from Pakistan's own Operation Sindor, point to a multi-shot doctrine. Sophisticated crews and supersonic missiles cannot be reliably stopped by a single interceptor. For the BrahMos, fastest and hardest to counter, Pakistan might be forced to fire up to five interceptors for each enemy missile, simply to achieve an even chance of success. For Nurbhe, three interceptors per missile. Large loitering drones would each necessitate two high-end missile shots, while the smaller, mass drone swarms could be partially countered by guns, electronic jamming, and cheap anti-drone drones, but ultimately would require two countermeasures per drone for any hope of defense. In this single-day scenario, Pakistan's defenders must launch 1,500 interceptors for Nurbhe, 250 for BrahMos, 2,000 for large drones, plus 2,000 countermeasures for the small drones. Each high-end missile, HQ-9B, HQ-16, LY-80, costs approximately $1 million and uses up precious inventory that cannot be replaced quickly, if at all. The daily cost climbs precipitously, $1.5 billion for Nurbhe intercepts, $250 million for BrahMos, $2 billion for large drones, and $10 million for the cheapest drone defense. A cumulative $3.76 billion spent each and every day simply to maintain a credible defense. 
That's more than 40% of Pakistan's total annual defense budget, expended in a mere 24 hours, with no guarantee of full coverage or success. The cost curve, as devastating as it is, tells only half the story. Each time a missile battery or radar is switched on to guide these interceptors, it exposes itself as a target to India's anti-radiation munitions and seed drones. These enemies are purpose-designed to home in on emissions and destroy air defense assets with ruthless efficiency. Ada suggests that under such conditions, 520% of advanced air defense batteries, launchers, and radars can be destroyed or disabled every day. Within just three to five days of continuous combat, the majority of Pakistan's HQ-9B and HQ-16 batteries would either be consumed, damaged, forced to remain silent and hidden, or outright destroyed. Interceptor stocks, already stretched thin, would be exhausted, and remaining launchers would have to husband their few remaining missiles for only the highest value targets, leaving wide gaps. As asset attrition builds, attacker leakers, those missiles and drones that evade interception, begin to reach their targets in ever greater numbers. Air bases, command and control centers, logistics hubs, power plants, and urban infrastructure all become vulnerable to repeated, unopposed strikes. Each successful attack shortens the operational lifespan of the defense network and saps national morale. The psychological blow of exposed leadership and unprotected civilian sites stirs panic and paralyses decision-making at every level. By day three, four, or five, the effective air defense of Pakistan collapses. The previously formidable HQ-9B batteries are gone or silenced, the medium-range HQ-16 similarly targeted and depleted, and radar coverage is shredded by relentless seed attack. What remains is a patchwork of FN, man-portable launchers, which can only threaten low-flying aircraft or helicopters in their immediate vicinity. Mobile anti-aircraft guns unable to reach or destroy supersonic missiles or coordinated drone salvos and a handful of electronic warfare and jamming units struggling to keep up with the sheer volume and sophistication of the incoming threats. The loss of credible air defense opens a floodgate. Every subsequent day of the campaign, India can strike military, governmental, industrial, and economic targets across Pakistan with near impunity. Command posts, airfields, nuclear sites, ammunition dumps, critical infrastructure, and even government headquarters become accessible to precision strikes. The country's leadership, aware that every visible asset is now at risk, faces an intolerable dilemma, continue fighting and face devastation, or seek an immediate ceasefire from a position of pronounced weakness. Against this backdrop, the possible arrival of China's HQ-19 missile defense system looms as a distant hope. In theory, the HQ-19 could add a layer of protection against India's most advanced ballistic missiles and perhaps even provide a deterrent against low-orbit satellites at the strategic level. Yet, as of mid-2025, no HQ-19 systems have arrived, been fielded, or integrated into Pakistan's defensive architecture. Even if delivered, their number and coverage would be minuscule, providing at most a point shield for a handful of national command assets. The vast majority of Pakistan's territory, cities, and critical nodes would remain wholly exposed to massed cruise missile and drone attacks. German IRST systems, which could theoretically offer modern medium-range interception, remain off the table in practical terms. No deliveries have occurred, and sanctions and export restrictions likely preclude any quick sale in a crisis. Financing and logistics compound these challenges. Pakistan's economy is already severely stretched by inflation, foreign exchange shortages, and a shrinking defense budget. The sheer cost of maintaining, firing, and restocking such expensive air defense systems without external help is prohibitive. The nation cannot import new interceptors at anything like the rate of expenditure under saturation, attack conditions, nor set up new batteries or repair destroyed radars and launchers in the midst of an unrelenting missile blitz. Modern military doctrine, as evidenced in Ukraine and Israel, leaves little room for optimism. The current trajectory of technology favors the offensive. Smarter, cheaper, more numerous munitions are able to overwhelm even sophisticated defenses in hours or days, not weeks. 
the attacker can afford to trade hundreds of drones for a handful of million-dollar interceptors, or ignore expensive defenses altogether and simply saturate them out of existence. Air defense, as traditionally conceived, with a few dozen high-value batteries spread over thousands of square kilometers, has not kept pace with the revolution in offensive capability. Without a complete rethink or technological leap, mass production of ultra-cheap counter-drone guns and missiles, fielding of directed energy weapons, or far deeper integration with friendly nations, it is virtually impossible for Pakistan to build a robust, sustainable, and comprehensive air defense in the near future. Even with the long-promised HQ-19, the gap between threat and shield is simply too wide. The result is a vulnerability so severe that within just a few days of an all-out modern conflict, Pakistan would lose effective control of its airspace and the ability to protect virtually any target of value. This is not theory but reality, forged in the crucible of recent global conflict and validated by Pakistan's experience in Operation Sindor. The economic drain, operational attrition, and cumulative technological disadvantage paint a harsh future. Unless revolutionary change occurs, the defensive era is over, and the lead belongs to the attacker. For Pakistan, this means that its cities, infrastructure, leadership, and strategic forces would become open to destruction, disruption, and defeat in record time should modern, sustained saturation attack break out. In sum, the age of massed precision munitions and drone warfare has left Pakistan's traditional air defense model fundamentally obsolete. Even as it seeks to upgrade with Chinese HQ-19 systems and dreams of Western interceptors, the math remains unforgiving. Every day of war could destroy what took decades to build, with no viable path to rapid recovery. The next major conflict would not just be fought in the skies over Pakistan, but foreordained by the collapse of defenses in a matter of days, setting the stage for catastrophic consequences unlike any in the nation's history.